espacio. Ik kan allemaal meer doen. All right, so uh, let's start. Yeah. Okay. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to this pitch of the Olympic Motor Games, our company, and we come in representation of UPC uh, Eco Racing. We are uh, an association uh, making each car, uh, each year, excuse me, uh, one Formula student car. So here you can see on the screen the Eco RD, the car of this season. Uh, that we have made. So we are 35 members, as I, as I have said, uh, coming from different uh, backgrounds, from different engineering backgrounds, 
aerospace, uh, mechanical, industrial, electrical uh, engineering. And we are divided in six different technical departments. So for example, frame, aerodynamics, powertrain, and so on. And now we have added the driverless uh, department, which is the newest one. Uh, it was born just three years ago. And this way we can make our car not only autonomous and not only manual, but also autonomous. So we in the team, we don't only have the technical insight of the project, but we also are in a managing department. So for example, logistics, marketing, and accounting. So this way we uh, are not only in the technical part of the engineering project, but also uh, looking at that insight that it's the only one. So we in the team, not only take the typical engineering uh, design approach, which would be to uh, uh, have in mind these three pillars, which are the scope, the cost, and the time, but we also are eco-friendly. So we also take uh, into account the sustainab sustainability. So when we make decisions, when we have to make solutions, we take in in into account uh, these four uh, main pillars. All right, so just uh, let's have a quick overview of our history. We uh, were born in 2008 with the Eco R2, the first car, the first concept of our team, and uh, it was the first Spanish hybrid, uh, hybrid car uh, of all uh, the country, and with it we had amazing results uh, in uh, other countries, uh, not only in Spain. Then we made our first huge uh, technical leap uh, in our history, which was the Eco RZ, this was the, the first 100% electrical car that we uh, made and it was uh, an amazing car which became the seventh in the uh, top world uh, ranking list of Formula Student and also we achieved two top ones uh, in 2016 and 14. And then in 2017 we made the Eco RX, the first car uh, that was four-wheel drive and also had a uh, monocoque that was made uh, of uh, carbon fiber and a full aero package. And we also achieved amazing results. And now we have the Eco RD, the first ma uh, manual and autonomous car in the whole state of Spain. So we are always on the verge of innovation. And Bao, if you would like to explain us uh, the driverless part. Sure. So here we can see a video that was recorded in third person. And it shows the car driving. This from last season in testing. So uh, the car is set up for driverless mode without the error package or some bits are missing. So uh, it is divided in three screens. On the bottom left corner, we can see uh, what the car perceives. So it has a single camera doing mode projection with a, a YOLO algorithm that can detect the cones and draw bounding boxes around them. In this way, we can size the cones, we can position them around the car, and we can also triangulate their position in relationship with the car, which is wic what we can see on the bottom right screen. We can also see uh, some markers which indicate the position of the car as well as a control parameter of the, this specific controller that we were using uh, with which we are able to achieve uh, some constant speeds and eventually uh, be competitive in the Formula Student Spain competition. All right, so now let's take a quick overview of the competitions that we have been to this year. So we started with Formula Student Netherlands uh, on July and it was from the 10th to the 14th of July of this year and we were uh, top five in the electrical uh, category of this competition and we know that our car is fast because we were top four in the autocross uh, event. So from there we went to Hungary and also uh, we made a huge leap uh, in our competition there and finally we went to uh, Germany to the first driverless cup competition in all history so we are proud to say that we are one of the 30, th of the 30 teams that uh, competed in this category. And now we're here in Formula Student Spain in Castelloli to also have amazing results, hopefully. All right, so now let's start with the proper presentation itself. We are Jordi Vázquez de Mas and Pau Climen, CEO and CTO of Olympic Motor Games, our company. And today he here with us is also Raquel Wam, member of the board of our company, and also uh, Alfonso Garcia and Guillermo Gutierrez. Okay, so let me start this presentation by telling you that entertainment has evolved. It's not the same today as it was 20 or 30 years ago, and this is because the user has changed. So we, in Olympic Motor Games, we think that we have the solution for this.
So we're going to take the best parts of two different worlds, which is motorsport world with Formula 1, Formula E and NASCAR for example, and then the classic uh, um, Olympic Games world with slalom, fencing or figure skating for example. And with this uh, we're going to take the innovation from motorsport and then the more uh, thrill uh, to compete for your country and this way we're going to create the Olympic Motor Games. We, and to do this we only need 5 million from you, the investors, and you're going to take the 30% share of our company for it. Right, <clears throat> so at the end we are a motorsport competition involving 12 teams from 12 different countries. And they are going to have 6 drivers from that country and one constructor from that specific country too. So this way we're going to promote those drivers that are, that are not, that, are not uh, that well known in those countries. Also we are going to have a unique point system. So we're going to host 6 different annual events in which we're going to combine them and we're going to have 21 categories uh, in those 6 annual events. So we're going to have freestyle, wheel to wheel and counter time racing in those six annual, six annual events that we're going to see just now. So in Olympic Motor Games we want to promote competitiveness and innovation. This way we're going to give prizes to the teams for each of the events and then at the end of the season. Alright, <clears throat> so Paul, what car are we going to use? So of course we're a motorsport competition, we have to choose a car which the teams will base their projects around. So we could go for the low performance but also low price options that are out there. Uh, this would correspond to go-karts or dune buggies, uh, but those are not high performing enough. Uh, so we could go for the other classical route which would be Formula 3 or Formula 1, which are extremely high performing cars, which also come with a very hefty price tag. Instead, uh, we are going to go with the EcoRD 2022. Now, this comes in perfect because it is an, ecologi uh, an economical car which is great for the team since they will be in charge of the construction of these cars. It is also high performing enough for it to complete all of the very demanding tasks that our events will put this car through. Okay, thank you Paul. So now, it is your turn for the judges to choose one of the six annual events that we're going to explain. So, if one of you wants to choose. So, you for example. Second one. Alright, nice choice. Let me Okay, so welcome to La Molina, welcome to the uh, most famous ski station in all Spain probably. So here you can see the Eco RD, our car. But you can see here that it has a little changes if you can notice. So for example, instead of wheels, it has a skis. So why is that? Well, because the teams are going to have to fulfill the requirements of all the competitions that they take part in. So for example, in this no doors competition taking part in La Molina, we're going to have a slalom competition, then ice rally, bobsleigh, and finally an obstacle race. All that in the mountains, in the snow. So the teams are going to implement, or are going to have to implement, some changes, for example skis, in order to fulfill those requirements. All right? So now let's take a look at the other uh, competitions. Okay? So, for example, here we can see an empty box. And with the fencing swords, we could go, for example, to the competition of Granada, to the gymnastics event. We're going to have three different categories there. Then the teams could implement normal road competition tires for the road event uh, hosted in Madrid. Then for the uh, snow indoors competition hosted in Zaragoza, they could, for example, implement an ice hockey or chains in the wheels, if they would, if they uh, would want to. Then uh, we are going to Euskadi, to the mountains, to take uh, part into the uh, mountain event. We've seen the skis for the Saragossa competition, for the La Molina competition, excuse me. And finally, we're going to Barcelona for the team sports event. So why not put for the uh, paintball competition, uh, paintball guns. All right, so now we know that we have a very, very good idea between hands. So now we're going to have to uh, make sure that we are successful. And in order to do this, we not only need a very good idea, but also two other fundamental pillars, which are a uh, work, uh, work brain on structure that is good, uh, brilliant timing, and a perfect financing. So, let's solve logistics.
This would be the chart diagram of our um, um, company with four different departments. Pau is going to lead the technical uh, department with eight people working with him. Then we are uh, seeing Alfonso that is going to uh, lead the marketing department. Then the logistics and production uh, departments are going to be led by uh, Raquel here. And finally, Guillem is going to take part uh, into the accounting management of the company. Okay, so, Pau, would you like to explain us the technical office? Of course. So in the technical office, we're going to make sure that nothing goes wrong in the competition. We must earn the trust of our viewers and our competitors, and as we've seen on some previous competitions, things can sometimes get out of hand. We must make sure that this doesn't happen, so we've, set, uh, we've made this set of regulations. Uh, they have been made by us exclusively in collaboration with the FIA. In this way, we do not only make the regulations for a car that we know best, but we can also implement the experience uh, and years of competition that the FIA could bring to the table to make sure that our rules uh, really stand out and make sure that everything is always under control and everyone is safe. While they will have to be very strict in some aspects, they will also leave enough space for innovation. We want our cars to be constantly improving and being upgraded so that we can stay on the avant-garde of technology. So, uh, these will be the regulations that we will make in the technical office. Okay, thank you, Paul. And then we're going to the marketing department. We're going to have two different approach for the marketing uh, section of our company. So we're going to uh, spend more or less 200,000 euros per event uh, for marketing. And we're going to take two basic approach. First, for the most more broad uh, audience that we want to tackle to. Uh, we're going to have more classic advertisement. So, for example, why not uh, try uh, buzzer station advertisements or TV uh, advertisements? So, we're going to have to focus the week before of the competition uh, with these advertisements, and then we're going to uh, tackle the more uh, the younger um, audience with social media advertisements. So, for example, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We want also them to be involved in our company. Okay, and then, finally, for logistics, we are going to uh, host the competitions in Spain, as we've talked, but uh, we want to know what they will cost to us. So, more or less, it's 800,000 euros for each, one more, one less, and we're, this way, we're going to take full advantage of the whole multiculturality of all Spain, which is very diverse. Then, we're going to, make, to have to make a decision between produ producing our product, our multimedia product, or contracting an external company for them to do it for us. So we've gone for the self-production option. So what are, we, what, what are we selling? We are selling a product, a multimedia product, to, uh, and we're selling the TV rights of it. So although it's going to cost 14% uh, of our budget, we still think it's worth it because it's, it's going to give us uh, a lot of freedom and a lot of power of choice. And finally, we have to make sure that everyone is safe, both drivers and the fans at the stage. So, we have implemented LiDAR technology, which is going to detect all the environment of our cars, and if it detects a dangerous situation, it's going to make sure that it, it, it is avoided. Right, so for the technical part of the presentation, I introduce you, Paul. So, our cars will be fully electric. We will see that in more detail later on. For now, what you need to know is that it features a battery pack with five sets of uh, series lithium polymer cells. Now, this will allow the car to have a uh, the battery pack of the car to have a 92% efficient efficiency. This means that the cars will output 57 kilograms of CO2 when compared to a traditional consumer car, which would output 564 kilograms of CO2 per year. So this is a very ecological option which we have uh, chosen to go to with. Now, when we work with these types of battery packs, safety must be first. So this is where the regulations come in, this is where the LiDAR anti-collision system comes in, as well as uh, very strict procedures that we will implement to make sure that ev uh, everything that happens in the competition happens following our rules and in some standard protocols. Now, on top of that, and going with our ecological mindset, we will also extract the energy that we use for throwing the competitions, editing everything, producing what we sell, uh, from the Spanish grid, which consists of 40% renewable energy. So now, let's take a look at the potential of our company and some possibilities for its future expansion. So, if we look at some companies or entities that exist in a similar space to ours, we can see that streaming platforms such as Dafon can amass up to 10 million yearly viewers. Now, this number can scale up to even 200 million 
when we talk about competitions such as the Olympic Motor Games, which we all know and love. So this is very clearly a market that we want to break into. Now, how are we going to do this? We have made a strategy uh, which will consist on focusing first on the Spanish audience and the Spanish market. This is what we know best since we come from Spain. Uh, we also know which venues we can rent out, uh, which places are more likely to sell out, and we have made some mathematical models to predict uh, the amount of viewership and ticketing sales that we could obtain. Once we know this and we have achieved a large enough audience in Spain, we will then move on to the European market where we will uh, uh, expand as a company and that growth will allow us to eventually tackle the, uh, the American and Asian markets. And these are some of the viewership figures, so you get used to them, which we will be working with. So now for the car. The car is 100% electric and four-wheel drive. With uh, it has a motor per wheel, and this allows up to 140 kilowatts of raw electric power. This car also features a carbon fiber monocoque with a full aero package. This allows the car to be extremely lightweight and resistant while being able to generate tremendous amounts of downforce. It also has 84 wooden inserts in the car. This makes it not only lightweight and more economical, but also more eco-friendly. Now, this results in a car that weighs 195 kilograms and is 81% efficient. And what this means is that it is able to make 0 to 100 kilometers per hour accelerations in just 2.4 seconds. This makes it an ecological car, which is very high performance for our competition. So, there are some automotive brands from target countries, which will be interested in our idea, and all have one thing in common, innovation. We believe that these countries will most certainly be willing to work with us and enter as teams or participants for our competition. Now, what, ha uh, what would happen if this wasn't the case in the first years, and we were building our reputation? Then we have a plan B. We can look at uh, that in more detail, but essentially Formula Student teams will be substituting those companies until we are large enough that they are attracted uh, for our company and are willing to join. So now for the part that we've all been waiting for, the finances. So as Jordi has previously said, we are asking for five, uh, 5 million euros investment by you. So let's take a look at what the budget of our company uh, will be distributed. So. A 61% of our budget would go towards throwing the events. This means renting out the venues, uh, seeking out uh, and making the necessary modifications. Then 15% will go towards the marketing, the marketing campaign that we have already discussed roughly a week before competitions. Then 40% will go towards the production, which means uh, buying the cameras, the film crew, the editing crew. Then 8% would go towards paying the prizes to the teams and 2% toward covering miscellaneous spendings. So, with this 5 million euro investment in our company, you will be the owner of a 30% share in it. Now, this uh, share will feature an ROI of 70% on the fourth year. And this number will scale up to 300% on the fifth year. And all of this comes at a 3.2 years of payback. So, here we can see the ROI versus years. And in this analysis, we have always projected a neutral scenario, which is already slightly below market value to give us some safety margin and then a pessimistic scenario, which is 40% uh, below market value. So here we can see that the ROI versus years rose in a very uh, healthy manner and is able to reach uh, this extremely great number. On top of that, the accumulated profit versus years also reaches a number that we're really happy with, as well as the cash flow, which remains uh, slightly steady across the years with a small dip that we can see uh, in front of the third year, which would correspond to when we would expand onto the European market we would have to make some more investments and that would uh, have a tiny dip. But uh, how are we going to invest our money to make sure that our company is more safe and secure? Exactly. So nice question, Paul. What we're going to do is invest. So we're going to make basically three different uh, companies that are going to accompany us in our journey. First, the first year, a production company. Then we're going to scale up to a marketing ag agency. And finally, on the fifth year, we're going to create an R&D bureau to help us with the, with the technical part of the competition. And this, all the company that we have seen, is going uh, to take only 2 million viewers in the third year. So we think that this is achievable because of the uh, viewers that all the companies that we have already seen uh, have. So we think that it is very achievable and we're going to do it. Okay, so Paul, for I did that topic, please. So now we're going to take a very deep dive into a topic that is very present and concerns all of us, the Ukrainian war, and how this would affect our company and its future development. 
So uh, in this uh, part of the presentation, we have analyzed three different scenarios which could affect us in varying degrees. The first scenario, which we see here, would consist of uh, only a increase in the prices of the parts, the production and manufacturing processes, as well as the electricity required to build this car. So in this case, if things didn't escalate to a further point, what we would do is we have analyzed the price of building the car uh, with international supply chains and local supply chains. We have observed that the difference in price is around 50,000 uh, 50, euros, which would correspond to a 27.5 increase. Now, this is a significant uh, number, and it the teams would have to take that into account. So to make sure that the teams are still competitive, and are still able to build a, a very powerful and, and top engineering race car, we have uh, chosen to raise the prize money that is awarded to the teams, uh, both in each event and also at the season end. So as we can see, for the number one prize, uh, the prizes would go from 30,000 to 40,000 euros, and for the season total, from 200,000 to 250,000. This is slightly above the 27.5% increase, but we believe it is necessary to incentivize the teams and make sure that they w still want to compete with us and can do so. Now, for the next scenario, let's say that tensions arose even more and the focus started leaving the, uh, the entertainment business and people uh, were more concerned by other topics at hand, right? So in this case, not only would the prices rise and we would have to make that switch, but also people would be slightly less interested in our product. So this is what we have modeled here, but on top of that, what we will have to do is rethink our expansion strategy. So instead of expanding in a worldwide manner, we would have this local expansion strategy. What we would do here is focus not only, but mostly on the Spanish audience, which is extremely uh, high, uh, diverse in its culture. So we would be able to make a marketing campaign that focuses on each province and its different technicality in their culture. And we could tailor that to the different population. We would also have to redefine our viewer segments so that this way we can appeal to the specific people from our country. And we do not have to worry about the different countries which maybe are not in the mindset to watch a, a sports competition. Now, this, with, this would all be with the aim to, for our competition to become the number one sporting event in Spain. Uh, we are certain that we are going to be able to do this if we switch our efforts as we have shown here. The thing is that it would shift our expansion uh, one to two years. Here we can see that the profit over the years would still reach a similar value, uh, at least in significance. The cash flow would also remain somewhat steady, though we would have to shift some of our investments to make sure that we are still able to thrive and survive. So we would delay again those investments in secondary companies. We have analyzed different scenarios. In this case, we can see four different scenarios uh, regarding different stages of escalation of the war. And we can see that along the years, uh, your investment will remain uh, quite consistent. So it is pretty independent from the external geopolitical factors. So now, for the worst case scenario, let's say that tensions arose to such a place where the viewership uh, from in our competition dropped to 40% below our expected values. Now, this is v uh, not very likely to happen at all. Uh, we can almost guarantee that it won't, but what if it did? We have chosen to analyze this because for the 5 million euro investment that you would partake in, for the same 30% share in our company, the ROI would still end up being positive around 20% on the sixth year, and the payback would shift to 5.6 years. Here we can see that the ROI would also, end, uh, as we have explained, end up being positive even in a double pessimistic scenario. The profit over the years would also end up being positive, and the cash flow uh, would be more affected, but again, by shifting <laughs> our investments even more considerably, we would still be able to achieve all of our targets. Uh, the main thing to take away from this scenario is that all of our achievements would be accomplished th uh, roughly four years after our initial predictions. So our investment would st still be really secure just some years later. So. In, as a summary, we are offering a global product with unique entertainment, unlike anything we've ever seen before, which is most certainly going to capture the audience. It is also environmentally friendly and comes with 3.2 years of payback. So, will you miss it? Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Sure, we have, uh, we have a couple of questions. 
Sure. Thank you, too. And first question is from the customer point of view, from the impression, from the customer perception, what are the choices? If you don't buy your product, what are the choices your customers have? So, our direct customers would be both the people that would go to the stages and the people that, uh, well, the companies, the streaming platforms that are buying our audiovisual product. So in this case, uh, what we have chosen to do is make sure that uh, no overlap exists within other competitions. So uh, we have timed all of our competitions in such a way that uh, they don't coincide. So the, view the viewer doesn't have to make a choice between watching us or watching some other competition or program. Uh, if you want to show that, yeah, slide. exactly. So as Paul says, uh, this is the scheme of our one weekend uh, of our competition. So we would have uh, different testing and uh, the event times. But uh, as we have said, we are going to um, make sure that our um, weekends in which we compete are not the same weekends as, for example, Formula One or uh, big sporting competitions, because that would definitely uh, the first years uh, make us suffer a little. So what we're going to do is uh, squeeze those weekends uh, in weekends a week. Uh, no, they don't compete. I don't know if that answers your question or... Uh, okay, thank you. Then uh, another question is, uh, mm -hmm. after starting this where is your chance of income? Think. Okay, so for example, we can see here the, the income that we generate uh, right now. Uh, so it will be uh, coming from both ticketing and TV rights, that will be the main part of it, but also uh, the uh, sponsors that we would have in the competition that would sponsor some parts of the events. So for example, if it would drop, uh, we would probably uh, seek for more sponsors or uh, try to change th this dynamic a little. So for example, if we say uh, we have a drop in the ticketing part of the uh, income, then we would definitely uh, go to sell uh, the TV rights to more companies or at least uh, try to make it uh, a little more uh, expensive or try to make us uh, a little more luxury as a competition. Um, so that will be uh, that will raise our cost of the TV rights. So that will be an approach, for example, of the uh, of, of that problem. Or if the TV rights uh, would drop, then we would definitely um, try to increment uh, the exposure of the uh, company and make the ticketing um, to uh, cover that part of the TV rights. And yeah, so on top of that, uh, in those projections that we showed. Uh, the drops were also uh, were at 40% and they were already at a under market value position. So even our pessimistic projections are close to hitting that two thirds drop. Mm -hmm. Maybe not quite there, but we have analyzed some really negative scenarios and we would still be able to survive, as he said, by switching uh, how we diversify our uh, revenue streams or uh, just by shifting our investments. And for example, in that case, if you, if I can add, um, so for example, let's imagine that we lost uh, some of our viewership. Uh, let me choose this. Then, as Paul said before, during the presentation, we would, for example, if the companies uh, wouldn't uh, like to come into the competition the first years, then we would, for example, go to Formula Student Teams, as they really know uh, how uh, this type of, of car works, and they would uh, definitely uh, race the uh, competition in terms of uh, competitiveness and sportsmanship also. Okay, so thank you for your question. Any more questions? No? Great, so thank you very much thank for you. your attention, thank all of you. <coughs>
quite the babies in Formula students so far. And uh, we're very happy to present to you uh, our EP Alpha Racing Technology, our spin-off that we founded at EP Alpha Innovation Park last year. So Alex, if you want to tell us more about the brochure. So exactly, everything we'll be, we'll be saying during the presentation, you have more details within the brochure. If it's not clear, you can already check it out. Otherwise, we can also discuss it at the end of the presentation, but everything's in there, all of the details. So yeah. that's it for me. I seem to have quite a thing with the, the weather right now. I wished for rain, and then a lot of rain happened, so I'm not going to wish to blow your minds because I'm scared something will happen. So <laughs> <laughs> off we go. Actually, as we start, I'll let you on in a secret. I am a terrible driver and an even worse racer. But yet, one of my greatest, fondest dreams is just to experience car racing at its highest level. But that's what exactly why we're here, actually. Alex, I don't know about you, but I've always dreamt about exiting an acceleration zone feeling breathless or about being just slightly bullied by G-forces as I drive over an apex. But right now, the only solutions that allow me to do this at top speeds are out of reach and super expensive. I am personally not willing to spend thousands of euros for it. And looking at your faces, I don't feel like you're willing to. But that's precisely why we're here. With your investment and our technology, we are ready to change the world of kart racing forever. And so, combining our cool car, a smart helmet, a powerful online system, our smart racing solution, EPFL racing technology. So I am Lisa, I am the CEO. This is Alex, our CFO. And together with our team of uh, experienced engineers and you, we're here <laughs> to present what will rock your world. But how exactly do, in do we intend to do this? We have two secret weapons. It starts with Artemis, our hunter, our fast electric car, and then Athena, our warrior, our super smart helmet. Alex, can you tell us more about these two products? Most definitely. So as Lisa said, first of all, we have Artemis, so 200 kilograms, three seconds from zero to 100 kilometers an hour, so fast acceleration. It's also nice in the turn, so driving Artemis is really the real deal at the moment. Of course, um, Artemis is, comes with Athena, which is a smart helmet developed together with LiveMap, so they're providing us with the mapping technology and anything related to safety within the helmet. So what can we do with it? First of all, we have driving aid, so trajectory lines, braking zones, acceleration zones, as well as any other kind of piloting advice that you can get. Of course, um, y it's also connected to the telemetry of the car, so you have real-time information about the battery, about the, the wheels, the engine, any issues you might face, and any safety guidelines that you might need to bring the car to safety. And finally, uh, which is one of the coolest features that we have in there, is that you can race against your best lap or the circuit's best lap within the helmet. So augmented reality racing. Now, the whole experience is enhanced by an online platform where you can access all of your data once you're done running with the car. So you can see what went wrong, what went, what went good, actually, that happens as well, and what could have been better thanks to the advice of our personalized AI which is built in into the platform. Now, on top of this, you can use the same platform to book your karting session. So basically, you just show up, you book it up beforehand, of course, you show up, you unplug it, you drive, plug it back in, and leave, no human interaction needed. So this is also interesting for COVID situations where you can just do everything from the platform. And on top of this, you can also, um, for the circuit owner point of view, you can also manage the whole business from one platform. So basically, we're digitalizing karting businesses because you can handle client uh, scheduling, payments, and also part replacements for the new cars because the cars are connected to the platform, and everything is run from one place. Now. This is nice, but what are we selling exactly? First of all, we're selling a package with six times Artemis, six units of Athena, and the whole telemetry kit, user interface, and so on. And this is paid for upfront. Now, with this, we're also selling extra services because we've noticed that while working with Artemis, we used to have uh, repair costs which were between 700 and 800 euros per year. And so this includes this kind of cost, so we're accounting for it and of course our profit margin on the service that we're providing. And finally, uh, the usual 15% margin on the franchising model, which uh, we're using so 5% for marketing because we're basically uh, doing the marketing for the whole circuits that are our clients. And uh, the 10% is usual royalties. And this will allow us to pay so to access the service and customer service. Now, we believe that it's time to dive into the world of electric racing uh, first of all, because we're developing new technologies. Second of all, we're leveraging heavily 
the rising popularity of Formula One, thanks to the Netflix series and other criteria. And most of all, we're announcing businesses to start new businesses at the fraction of the cost. Because if you're an owner, you already have a circuit and you're able to start a new business with our solution. Whereas if you were going to build a whole circuit just to start this solution, it would be much more expensive, trust me. Now, Lisa, can you tell us more about our business model? So, surely I can. Our objective is to, uh, is to contact 2,000 circuits across Europe. So far, we're already in touch with 20 circuits and 15 of them in Switzerland and France only cannot wait to partner with EPFL Racing Technology. So this is super, uh, but on the other hand, we don't just rely on circuits. We are also uh, targeting semi-professional to professional drivers as well as racing, racing enthusiasts because by garnering their, uh, their interest, we're increasing demand for our potential client. But exactly, what's your competition and what's our value on the market? Well, it's quite simple. If you have a look at the karting, for a 30-minute session, it costs, it costs on average in Switzerland and France 90 euros. Our Artemis, for 30 minutes, costs 106 euros. But what does Artemis have that a karting doesn't have? Well, the speed, of course, as well as the driving assistance. But then if we have a look at the typical Renault Monza that's for four 24 laps, more than four times more expensive than our Artemis, well, surely, perhaps its top speed will be faster, but you know, we're here, we're drinking cof coffee in Lausanne, we want to go for cart, we want to improve. Will we really go all the way to Italy just for uh, 24 laps? Sure we won't, but will we drive 20 minutes to our nearest circuit and we drive just for it? Well, yes, we will. And so it just adds, uh, it just adds so much more value to it. But if typically we have a, a more focused view into our competitors, of course, go-karting, no driving assistance, lower sensation. I told you that I, I am terrible at driving. How do I improve and how do I experience top speed with go-karting? Well, I can't. With motorsports cars, well, perhaps once in my life I'll be able to afford the lap in a, in a Renault Monza. And the price I showed you earlier is just one of the lowest ones. If I want to go into a faster car, a faster Renault, or it will just be so much more expensive. And I cannot afford to go all the way there just for 24 laps with a driver assistance that's only by communication and that is not visual, as opposed to our Athena. So whilst there's human assistance and high sensations, I can't afford it, and neither can you. And there's one last competitor that I did not mention. It's virtual experience karting. And whilst there is no driving assistance, as well as the limited experience, it's essentially a game of, uh, it's a static game rather than a race of skill. So that's why we're here, and that's why you're here. But then, now that we're all here, <laughs> we have to look at the, <laughs> the market tendency. The global go-kart market right now is worth 110 million euros approximately. But it's expected to grow by 50% by 2030. That's only eight years from now, which is why we need to act on the ultimatum now. But you may ask, why is the market growing so quickly? There's very different and logic va uh, values for this and reasons. The fact that technology is becoming more available, the fact that car uh, the kartings are becoming more and more suited for indoor circuits as well as urban circuits, the fact that there is a global push to reduce CO2 emissions and that we're becoming more and more interested in electric mobility, and that with the uh, increasing popularity both in the United States and in Europe of motorsports, there is, uh, there is a, a huge interest in motorsport racing as a hobby. So, Alex, what, uh, uh, with our marketing and communication, we need to have a clear plan. And it's quite simple, actually. We start with social media and our website. It's very important, as Alex told you, to have a website that's fully transparent and from which we can have all of the information that's accessible to both our circuit owners and our clients, since they are booking the sessions in our website and that the circuit owners need to see who's coming in and that our clients are perhaps interested in seeing what's the weight of uh, our car, how many motors does it have, what can we expect or not expect? And so this is why um, the 10% of our marketing is spent on our website in order to make it at the highest quality possible. But then if we also have a look at our social media, you'll see that 20% of our marketing is allocated to mar market research as we're fully invested into making great research into TikTok, Instagram, and Twitch trends in order to jump on board and garner the greatest audience we can and grow it and uh, attract more clients. And so. 
now that we have this marketing that's fully online, we have another one, which is to broadcast our championship. So now that we have our partner circuit, we want to organize a championship around our 15 tracks so that people can follow it on Twitch or on YouTube, interact with our drivers, and our drivers can, uh, are well-known ambassadors that can promote our brand. Actually, we'll just let you in on the secret because we confirmed yesterday night, but Sebastian Buemi and Eduardo Mortara, which are, as you know, Swiss Formula E veterans, cannot wait to be the first one to participate in our 1v1 Street Buff uh, <laughs> inauguration race. So now you know, it's a secret, of course. And Alex, if I tell you that we need 700,000 euros for this, where would you say this money goes? Definitely. So for 700,000 euros, you can get 30% equity of our company. Now, by 2027, you can expect to get a return on investment of 26.93%. And how are we going to use this money? Well, 58% is going into salaries, 23 into CAPEX, 9% in marketing, uh, as Lisa show, as told before, and the rest is going into running costs and research and development. Now, on top of your initial inv investment, we also have active income and passive income, income as I've shown before. Active income is coming from the upfront sales of the packages, so the 250,000 um, euro package that I shown before with six units of each, and the passive income is coming from the ticket sales as well as from the extra services provide. Passive income is used to stay afloat in difficult situations, as we've all seen uh, recently, and this is what we're leveraging. And also, uh, last word on active income, we're, we are hoping to reach, or we will reach, our uh, break-even point by our sixth customer. As you can see on this curve here, that should happen uh, throughout uh, the first, the second year, so getting into the second year. And we are hoping to generate more than 11 million euros by 2027. Now, to evaluate the, the value of our company, we've taken into account two different parameters. First one being the discount rate. So usual discount rates were from 40 to 60% for startups. Could go as high as 70% if it's really risky. We estimate that our business is not that risky. That's why we went for the 50% because the car is fully developed. So is the helmet. Um, on top of this, we use the depreciation rate for machines of 10% because we estimate our machines to last for 10 years from what we got from the, the, the suppliers of the, these machines and of course the one that everyone hates, the tax rate, which is 30% in Switzerland. And with all of this, um, we calculated our NPV to be of about 2 million by the fifth year. Now, this is in an ideal scenario where the world is great, everything is amazing, but uh, as we all know and we've heard before, there's an ongoing energy crisis. And of course, the NPV will be impacted, the cash flows, everything will be impacted within the company. Now, before uh, giving you details on how this is impacting the company, allow me to give you some context on what's going on. At the moment, um, in Europe, 23% of the energy we're consuming is electricity. So only 23%. Out of those 23%, 36% um, uh, is being produced from fossil fuels. So about a third of the energy uh, producing electricity comes from fossil fuels. And out of these fossil fuels, about a third, again, comes from Russia. Now, imagine uh, the current war a lot of makes that uh, we are cut from these supplies, these energy supplies, then this would mean that we, we would have access in Europe to 8.6 less percent electricity. Now, keep this number in mind because it will be useful on the next slide. So, how is this energy crisis impacting us and our clients? Well, first of all, we are, no, we are seeing a 20% increase in the electricity price in Switzerland. That's a fact for production. And that's something we're taking into account at the moment. And now, if you take into account the 8.6% uh, figure that I mentioned in the earlier slide, then given the fact that we need to make 27 charges of the cars during the day to make them run all day, uh, then this would translate into us not being able to charge three cars throughout the day with the 8.6% cut in electricity and so three less tickets sold, what does this mean? Well, for us, it's a 15,000 euro loss per year per package, so each client will have this loss, and for each client per package, they will lose almost 85,000 euros. Now, you have the choice to just have this loss, or you have the choice to take the solution that we're providing to you, which is selling three extra batteries that would charge um, during the night, and in case uh, energy runs out, you don't have any more energy, then you have these three batteries that still allow you to run the karting throughout the day, and so no ticket losses here. But then again, this is a choice. That's why we've analyzed three 
scenarios. So first one, blue curve, is ideal scenario, magic world, nothing happens. Second scenario, it's the good one where all, all of our clients are actually buying the three batteries because they feel like it's a great solution and so they're all buying. And final scenario is clients don't have any money to pay for uh, the batteries up front, which I forgot to mention, it's approximately 20,000 euros that they would have to invest. And so instead of having a 85,000 loss, they would have a 65,000 loss. But we need to understand that some clients might not have the cash up front. And so in any of these scenarios, what you have to see is that the NPV remains positive. And so the business remains uh, a nice investment opportunity. So I will end the presentation with this. Thank you for your attention. And I hope to see you on track maybe when Lisa becomes a better driver. Thank you. In terms of contingency, uh, what if, what if uh, um, there's a bigger drop either in the income or, or in costs, or so, so your margin would drop by mm, twice than you expected? Um, I think, so we had a, a slide on this, I, don't know. I think, yeah, I think it was this, this figure. So. If we had to lose 40% of the customers, then um, sales would be impacted this way. So we would go from approximately 12 million to um, 8 million uh, in, in, in the sales. And I don't have the figures in mind for the costs that we require, but you have them on the brochure if, you m if someone would, would like to have a look. I think it's towards the end. Mm -hmm. So depending on how the cost looks like, maybe we can compare with, with the sales and have an idea, but uh, this is not a number we calculated before. Anyway. This is just so 40% of the less of the clients would mean this decrease in sales. In the mix. And of course, if you're speaking in terms of contingency on the electrical grid, that means that our clients will unfortunately have, if it, it's past the three extra batteries that will supply, they, they will have uh, lower income and so will we but that's also unpredictable and so far as we have a look at the electricity market it seems to be very stabilized from the 8.5 percent and typically in Switzerland there's already resiliency which we had accounted for previously as uh, electricity costs were already ri rising when we considered our business plan and uh, typically so there is also resiliency uh, with the contingency on the electrical grid. And overall the final impact would probably be that either the return on investment could be postponed by a year or decreased in the fifth year and greater in the year after that. So this is the kind of thing, but we expect not more than a year of, of postponement of this. Thanks. Uh, then second question is, um, what if for instance, uh, uh, why a potential customer instead of, so the circuit owner, instead of buying the electricals from you, electrical cards from you, would buy them uh, because they find them cheaper because there are now many many manufacturers of electrical vehicles so you mean as in buying the car and still wanting to collaborate for us uh, with us for for the helmet i don't know if you want you mean buying as if they find another another company supplying yeah. a product like yours well it's it's t it's the same as go kart the fact that they will have electric cars but they won't have the driving assistance, so they will be getting used to driving electric carts, but they'll never know if uh, when to brake, if they're braking too early, they won't have this assistance, and they won't be able to, with these electric carts, they won't be able to join uh, our tournaments and uh, participate in the whole, uh, the whole social outlet that we offer, both online and offline. So here, essentially, you're not only buying a product, you're also buying a whole racing experience, not only technical, but also social. So I do feel like there's this human aspect that that, that virtually uh, making a deal of that you can't get from another competitor.
Good evening. Uh, uh, we are members of Sapienza Fast Charge, a team of Formula Student Electric uh, and uh, Pro Room. And we are uh, um, Francesca and Alessandro, and uh, we are members of the funding team of uh, Fast Charge Academy. There is a problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is the team uh, that work uh, in our business idea that we present uh, uh, now. And uh, in the uh, following minutes, uh, we uh, will talk about the introduction and market analysis, uh, our offer and our car, uh, marketing strategies and economics and financial. Let's start with the uh, introduction and market analysis. Um, we, uh, in our idea, the uh, main points uh, are uh, rental, uh, so uh, restruct, uh, car rent, uh, and uh, a service we called Open Access, the Automotive Engineers Academy, and the Race Car Drivers Academy. Uh, why all of this? Uh, because uh, uh, we want to exploit uh, the um, we want to uh, exploit the um, all the. Um, the uh, academies of uh, uh, the lack of companies. Uh, the so, uh, in fact, uh, in the um, now uh, there are uh, um, a problem uh, in, the, in this point of view because uh, in the um, we want, in fact, uh, to show the leap between amateur and professional, and we want to share uh, the acquired knowledge. We. Um, we make the market analysis uh, and uh, we, um, we uh, see that, uh, as uh, the graph show, that the la there is a lack of education in the motor industry. Um, according to the graph, uh, in fact, uh, we can see that uh, there is possibility to, uh, the, um, to do the business uh, health uh, co marketing courses, uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, uh, not uh, in the automotive industry. So, um, after the market analysis, we um, catch uh, the target client. Uh, we have Finn. Um, he is a motorsport passionate and he wants to become a professional driver and may have uh, some professional experience, uh, but he also wants to. Uh, some uh, me mechanical uh, knowledge uh, for a better experience for uh, with the car, so uh, for uh, manage it uh, better. And uh, um, we are the we have the automotive engineers Perry. Uh, that uh, is a graduate, a young graduate, graduate, and he wants to become uh, uh, an automotive engineer uh, specialist. I uh, also want to try the experience uh, of uh, being in a motorsport team. Um, going into uh, details uh, with uh, our market analysis, uh, we um, want to uh, see what the competitors offer, and uh, we, um, from uh, the automotive engineer's uh, point of view, we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, few. Uh, schools uh, uh, that offers few hours of practical uh, teaching. The point is for us is uh, most more important because uh, um, help uh, the uh, engineers to manage better the car, and uh, we also um, see the uh, cost per hour and what they offer. So uh, teaching, teaching materials, clothing, insurance, and so on. Uh, 
from the driver school's uh, uh, point of view, we have uh, um, a market almost absent. In fact, uh, uh, drivers today um, could choose all, uh, all just uh, an individual and group courses with instructor. And uh, as uh, uh, the graph shows, uh, the um, cost per hours is uh, very high. And there are few uh, hours of practice. And um, so uh, the, uh, made the market analysis and the introduction uh, we, uh, we have a problem. So there is a lack of education in the armor industry. And so we uh, are going to uh, tell about our offers. Um, the answers to this problem is Fast Charge Academy. For it, we built uh, a dedicated structure from scratch. From scratch, because uh, for it, uh, for us, uh, is uh, more convenient and uh, allows us to uh, customize it uh, from um, for the academy sector. And um, we have the circuit, the peg deck uh, areas, and the academy structure with the office floor, the mechanics, uh, the academic floors, the car uh, drivers academy, academies uh, with um, things uh, like simulator, gym of pros, and uh, obviously the workshop in industry where uh, uh, the where there are uh, there is uh, the car production and uh, where uh, uh, our engineers work. So uh, we uh, know that a circuit uh, FIA regulated must have some safety measurement uh, like martial curves, star barriers, uh, homologation, and we considered it, uh, uh, all of them in our cost, uh, in our circuit of uh, 3,000 meters in length and 10 meters in width, obtaining this total. And um, we think about uh, also the online of the circuit, so the audio media system, uh, the, uh, the visual panels uh, for a better experience uh, for the driver and uh, his coach, and also uh, obviously anchor the, uh, the fire's wire equipment uh, um, for a better uh, safety. So. Everything obviously needs a car and we designed a very strategic uh, production because uh, with one philosophy. Our philosophy is that every new driver should have a new car every year. And although we know that this is very expensive to do, uh, we decided to put quality over cost. So as you can see here, as Francesca told you before, for the first year we have construction because we construct everything from scratch, the circuit and the buildings. So unfortunately we cannot have any drivers, that's why it's zero. But still, uh, for the first year we produce 20 cars because we are going to use them for the other services like the rentals for the next year. Because we want every driver for every year have the same car and uh, this production as you can see for the third year it caps at 25 cars because uh, we designed the circuit uh, to be best uh, with 25 cars on track so it's beneficial for us in or to uh, increase the number of drivers and uh, we can let them have the new car because they are not going to use it every in the meantime and uh, we also have a, a policy that 50 percent of the product of the cars producted are going to be used uh, for uh, other services like the rentals because even though we know that we want a new car and uh, the other cars that we produce uh, uh, we don't want to trash them because we want to be sustainable so 50 percent they're going to be used and the other half will try to uh, recycle as much as possible so this is for the car for the strategy as for the car production as we can as we look in at an explosed 3d CAD of our car we can see that the price uh, uh, that includes the, the machinery and the components and the human resources amounts to 40,000, almost 40,000 euros. And that's, that's really not the price of the car, that's the cost. So that's the flat cost of our car, of each car, at least for the first year where we are going to have our base car without uh, very much uh, new research and development on it. Now let's talk about our core businesses, as Francesca told you, Automotive Engineers Academy. And uh, the price uh, at first is going to be 20,000 per year. 
and we divided the price uh, for the number of hours of lesson in order to have uh, an hourly rate and see if we were into the market with the prices. And uh, for our competitors, we saw that the range is from 20 to 24, so we're perfectly in, uh, while giving uh, a lot of more hours uh, that they were doing because uh, it lasts for nine months, so an academic year, and uh, it has 900 hours for 600 hours of theory lessons because we give a lot of importance for the theory even if for automotive engineers and 300 hours of practice lessons. We even drew up a timetable for the drivers, for the student, uh, uh, sorry, for the engineers, so they can see what they're going to expect. So in the morning they're going to have three hours of theory lessons, then a lunch break, and then one hour and a half of practicing lessons. As for the driver's academy, we did the same thing. So obviously the price is going to rise up a bit. The price is going to be 30, 35 uh, thousands per year. Now we know that's a bit pricey, but we looked at the market of other type of one-year masters and courses such as the uh, pilot license or the chef courses or all of these masters that uh, promise you a specialization. And we know what we give and the quality of uh, what we put. So we think uh, also we studied the break-even point and we think that the price is, uh, is a good price for what we are going to offer. And uh, at the hourly rate is 14 euros per hour, so um, it's completely uh, in market, even though, as we saw before, uh, there's not really a market because all of the other courses last like five hours and nine hours, going to rates like 300 euros an hour. And uh, also this academy lasts for one year, and it's uh, divided in 600, almost 600 hours of coach driving. And that's very important for us because we see the driver, the student, as an athlete. And like every professional athlete, they have their own coach that is able to train them, uh, even um, being able to capitalize on his own characteristics that are different from driver to driver. And uh, we also got almost 200 hours of theory lessons because we believe that a good pilot, a good driver, should have um, some mechanical and some theoretical knowledge on how the car works in order to be better at driving them themselves. And even here, we drafted up this timetable, so one hour of theory lessons in the morning, then the lunch break, and then four hours of coach driving every day for five days a week. And uh, in the price, there obviously are um, simulators, professional simulators that we looked up on the market, and they go at 15, 20,000 euros, and we, we put them on the costs. And obviously, there's, a, there's even a, a private gym for the athlete in order to uh, be the best, um, even physically. And the gym also is called calculated in the cost. Now, let's see, these were our core business services. We have other three types of services, the non-core, we have the classic, no, this is the open access, the service Francesca was talking to you about earlier. That's a type of service that we invented that is kind of like a gym membership. When you choose one of these two packages for six months or 12 months, and then you can have a free access to the truck and the car. You come, you take the car, you drive, and you can go wherever you want, whenever you, you like. Then we have the classic race truck rental that is goes for 3,000 euros for one day. Um, even here we are, the, we are not like the other race trucks rentals because uh, we saw the market and uh, they just rent it for like five hours or eight hours. You not have a full day and you don't really have many optionals. But if you rent the race truck uh, with us, you, have, you get a full day, full access to all the cars and you can do event, there are all, uh, a lot of services that we put you um, within this price. And then for the last service, we got the classic car rental, two different packages, uh, both 25 minutes, one at 170 and the other 200. The difference is that for the 200 package, the car is completely uh, personalized and set up, so the client can call and uh, say, I want to rent this car and I want this type of setup. So this is for the most uh, experienced drivers. They know how they like their car set up. And uh, when they come, they tell us the code of the book, of the, of the booking, and we give them the car perfectly personalized as their likings. So once we saw the services, let's see how we are going to 
uh, let the people talk about ourselves or our marketing strategy. Our marketing strategy is going to be uh, very aggressive. We are trying to, we are going to be on every single platform and uh, uh, trying to exploit every single trend going as far as creating our own NFT with our designers in order to always try to be on the top of the, on the tip of the tongue of everyone. We are going the, to uh, collaborate with one of our main sponsors, that's Gazzetta dello Sport, one of the most important sport newspaper in Italy. And uh, we're going to do live on, uh, lives on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. We're going to be a lot uh, aggressive. In fact, as you can see on the table, we have the first two years, we're going to spend a lot of money, the majority of one, uh, because we know that at first you have to uh, spend a lot of money for the marketing and then by the third year we uh, are going to let the, the ball roll. So the marketing to speak to itself uh, by uh, having some clients, some drivers that go out from our school, maybe become pros and the name of the school just spreads. But obviously we're still going to invest on marketing. So now let's talk about the economic side of our business plan. This is the economic dashboard and we are going to talk about every uh, aspect here in detail, starting from the costs. So here is the sum of the costs for five years and it goes to almost 10 million totals. And as you can see, the big majority, almost 60%, is made by land and construction. Because obviously, as we said before, we're going to construct everything from scratch. And the price of land and building the building and the racetrack and everything is going to be huge. And the other majority of the costs are going to be the finished the finish product. As we said before, our car is expensive to produce. And, uh, and we have this philosophy of always trying to build new cars and we know that it's going to be expensive. It's almost one-fifth of the whole budget for five years. But as we said before, we prefer to put the quality over the, the net income over our the cash in our pockets basically because we know that in order to make money, you have to spend money. So with the quality of the service, we are going to get more clients and then we're going to um, be able to recover from the costs and in fact we estimated that even if for five years we get 10 million of costs, in five years we're going to get almost 20 million of revenues. And obviously, as we said before, for the first year we're going to have no revenue because we are uh, not functional. We are under construction. We took the time off for the constructing part. And, but we can see that when then we go 100% uh, functional, we are going to get a steady income that is going to increase obviously given by the popularity of the academy and as we can see we divided the three columns of our services the academy of engineers is the most profitable one then we got the rentals so the, all of the other services that i showed you before and then we got the academy of the drivers and uh, it's the least profitable one and uh, it's a logic result because we know that the market for that type of school is uh, very little is a very small niche and the cost is pretty high so it's normal that is the one service that is sold less. But even then, we know that we can cover, we are going to cover the costs with the price uh, of, the, of, of the excretion and the other rentals. So now that we solve the costs and the revenues, we can see the operating income. So we have the columns of the uh, costs and revenues together, and we can see that uh, on the first year we have revenue, but that's not revenue for production, that's uh, uh, investors' money. So uh, that is not a mistake. And then we can see that the first two columns, we have uh, the costs that are obviously higher than the revenue. But by the third year, thanks to your help, thanks to your money, we can uh, turn a profit and go into almost half a million of profit by the fifth year. So with all of this profit, what are we going to do? We have this tree diagram here with the blue side and the red side. The blue side is the net operating income, so all the, of the money that we have available. And we are going to use it uh, for the huge chunk uh, to give 35% of dividends to our investor. Investors that we are asking for uh, 5 million euros in order to 
uh, start up our company. We call this five million, euro, 5 million euros startup money because without your money we cannot make our idea because as I showed you before and how, and how you can see on this red graph, we are going to spend the majority of this money, 60% for construction and 20% for marketing. So the two big things that we need to be able to let this, uh, um, this idea rise. Then uh, for the our money, we're going to use it, as I said before, for dividends, 30% for research and development, and then we got a lot of small chunks, one for other financial investments, construction and marketing. So now that we saw the economic dashboard, we're going to see the financial indexes. So here on the pie charts, you can see the value of the indexes on the fifth year, while next to it, you can see the value that rises for all of the five years. So um, highlighting the values on the fifth year, we can see that they are completely on par with other businesses in the market. And uh, in the timeline, they are going to increase. Then we also calculated the net present value that is positive, so that means that is a good investment to make your money into. And we calculated the leverage, and uh, for all of the five years, even on the first year, they, uh, the leverage is close or uh, uh, more than one. So we know that the leverage tells us that we are a stable company to invest into. So talking about economics, we cannot uh, go away from the period that we're in. Obviously, as we all know, we are living in uh, um, war times, in energy crisis. There obviously, uh, from reputable sources, we know that the, uh, the majority of the liquid fuels and other gases uh, come from Russia and Eastern Europe. And moreover, Italy is very impacted by this crisis. Um, and I say Italy because that's where we're going to start the academy. In fact, Italy gets 46%, so almost half of its gas imported from Russia. And that gas is going to uh, make almost a quarter of uh, our electricity. So this uh, created a price surge of 55% for the electricity and 42% for the gas. So, uh, how are we going to react to it? Well, at first we divided the two types of costs, the impacted ones and the not impacted ones. So we could see where we could uh, maybe cut some losses. And uh, on the not impacted ones, we put human resources, maintenance, licenses, uh, security, electronic devices, all of the, these type of costs that didn't really change during these times. While on the impacted ones, we put the land, building, warehouse, and track, on the 50% increase, going by the um, increase in price in the uh, in the house market and the land market and the land market, while uh, the big surge is going to be in the utilities, of almost 55%. But luckily, the big uh, amounts of money we're talking about the land, two million, three millions, they are going to surge with a small percentage, while the utilities that is not one of the, our biggest expenses, is the one that increases the most. So with a weighted average, the total increase is 6%, going with a total budget of uh, from 5.7 million to 6 million, so only 300,000 of euros more to spend. So how are we going to uh, make a strategy to it? Well, we, we say that the rising costs all, um, only 6%, 300,000 euros, is not that relevant to uh, make us change our strategy or some aspects of our business plan. And the forecast the clients, the market is not going to be impacted um, because even in this time of crisis, the sports market are not really the first to fall. They still make uh, uh, good uh, income. And we're going to adjust maybe be more conservative strategy due to more like the war times, but the energy crisis is not going to touch that much. So, to wrap it up, why you should invest in Fast Charge? You should invest in Fast Charge Academy because we are not selling a business. We, this is not just a business. This is the creation of an idea, of a possibility for every dreamer to become a driver, to finally say that they have a spot, a place where they can learn their career because if someone wants to become a pilot uh, of an airplane or a driver or uh, a chef or something they have one place where they can go but nowadays there is not really 
anything like it. So we're selling the possibility to everyone that has a dream and that's passionate to create a career in this world. And as we can see in the numbers that we forecasted, it, the idea is going to be profitable. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. So, um, uh, for instance, one question is would be, what if you had an event uh, as as an, an, an unexpected event, which could be a combined the effect of the uh, the COVID crisis and the Ukraine war crisis? If we had such an event, unexpected, what would you do? Well, uh, first of all, if we're talking about a events like uh, pandemics, for example. Uh, we could, being that is a, a very, um, we select our students, so there's a close number. So we could choose to not have uh, a lot of people in this classroom and give the personal space and the legal space that the state told uh, to give uh, for these instances. Um, that's for the pandemic in particular. But if we're talking about huge uh, risks and uh, um, some events that you cannot calculate, um, I think that with our business model, we are very flexible because we basically decide, we can decide everything. We can decide how many clients we can get in. So given the number of clients, we can output the number of cars. Same thing for the, for the rentals. We can, uh, uh, if we have the market and the clients, we can basically filter and choose how much we want to spend by varying these two factors. So we can have a very flexible strategy for that matters. And another question is, uh, for instance, imagine that you have already started uh, running your business, mm -hmm. and in the first or second year, you have uh, a very well-known brand, such as, let's say, Ferrari or McLaren, that they, 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 they launch, the, they, they uh, open an, aca an academy as well. What would you do? Yes. Uh, well, uh, Ferrari kind of has, uh, already have an academy, the ones where they let their pilots through, like uh, Charles Leclerc and now his brother or his cousin, I don't really remember. But I think that those type of brands do not really want to uh, open their school to everybody because they have their image to protect and they they also want to um, develop their own pilots in order to make them into Formula 1s or other. And we know that in Formula 1 you can have like one or two drivers. So you cannot have like a classroom of 40, 60 people. But in our case, the only uh, barrier that we put on the engineers ones is that you have to be graduated and that's it. And for the drivers, there is no barrier. Like, there is only the age, you must be uh, older than 14, and then you have to pay, and that's the, like the other barrier that we got. We can let everyone through. If you have this dream and you can achieve it, you can, uh, you can come with us. And you cannot say the same like for Mercedes or Ferrari, because they are very selective, because they want to put that image out. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.